ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحج حج محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار all praise belongs to allah we praise him we seek his forgiveness and his guidance we seek refuge in allah from the evils of our own deeds and the evil of our own egos any one whom allah guides then no one can lead him astray and any one whom allah leaves to stray then there is none that can guide him and i bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship and no gods in reality except allah the one and only and i bear witness that muhammad ibn abdullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his slave and his final messenger allah says what could mean in the quran o oh, you who believe fear allah respect allah remember allah as it is his right to be feared respected and remembered and don't you dare die except that you die as a muslim allah also says what could mean o oh mankind fear your lord have taqwa for your lord the one who created you all from one soul adam and created from that soul its mate eve and raised up and spread from the two of them many men and women and fear allah the one whom you ask things for and don't cut ties with the wombs that bore you indeed allah above you all is laying in watch allah also says what could mean o oh, you who believe fear allah respect allah think about allah and in light of your fear respect and thinking about allah say a word that goes straight to the point so that it penetrates the issue if you do this allah has promised us that he will rectify our affairs he will make right something we did wrong and forgive you your sins and whomsoever is already obeying allah and already obeying his messenger has already achieved the highest 
achievement anyone could ever hope to aspire for. As for what follows, then know that the best speech is in the Qur'an, the speech of Allah. And the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the most evil of affairs are those things that we invent and we come up with ourselves. Every one of these things that's not in the sunnah, that's not in the Qur'an, that's not in the Islamic law, is something that leads us astray. And everything that leads us astray, even a little bit, will eventually wind us up and lead us into the hellfire. Some of us have our priorities mixed up. Some of us have our priorities mixed up. Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah, he was a famous general. He was known as the trustworthy one in the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa radiyallahu anhu. He was a general and he lined his troops up and he inspected them. And you know in an inspection of the troops he wants to make sure that their uniforms are clean, that they're well groomed, that they have their weapons ready and their equipment is proper. And he afterwards after inspecting them he said to them, some of us have our priorities mixed up. You see one of us come to Jumu'ah with a clean thobe, ironed and pressed, washed body, itra on him. But his soul is a dirty, stinking, filthy soul. His heart is filled with blackness and disease. So we'll clean our thobe and we won't leave the house unless our soul and our clothing and our body is well cleaned and presentable for the eyes of man. But we don't ever think about cleaning our hearts. Purifying our hearts, emptying our hearts. We walk around in the daytime and we pick up dust from walking in the street dirt from walking past people that smoke when we walk past the water the car splashes a little bit of filth on our clothing so even if we ourselves didn't sweat much didn't come up with much internal filth we get the filth of the dunya on our physical clothing and we would never ever think to leave out our homes or even Approach our children sometimes in the house when we come in the house with dirty clothes or go out with dirty clothes. I remember going to the internet cafes in Egypt. And if anyone's been there, they smoke a lot of cigarettes. So if you spend five minutes in there, your whole thobe is drenched in the smell of cigarette and nicotine. So I used to come home and make sure that before my children hugged me, or before I gave my wife a hug, I would say, wait one second, and I would take my thobe off, go make wudu, and even more than wudu, just to wash that filth off me, and then greet my family. But the external is of less importance than the internal. Because as we have learned, every physical, Every external act of ugliness begins with an internal act of ugliness in the heart. اقترب للناس حسابهم وهم في غفلة معرضون. Allah subhanahu wa taala says, اقترب للناس حسابهم. Man's account 
with Allah is getting closer and closer. Every day, every moment. Our life is the moments that we live. اقترب للناس حسابهم وهم في غفلة And they, the people, are unmindful. They're not paying attention to any of that. معرضون Turning away from it. Not paying any attention. ما يأتيهم من ذكر من ربهم محدث إلا استمعوه وهم يلعبون There doesn't come to them any new reminders from their Lord. And the reminders from your Lord come in many different ways. You could see something in the street happening and that's a reminder for you from your Lord. You could see a car accident. You could see an old person in the street or a young person being born into the world and that's a reminder for you. تِلْكَ أَيَّامٌ نُدَوِّلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ These are the days that Allah tricks them, turns them back and forth. He gives us these, these vicissitudes of life. One day we live, one day we die. One day we celebrate life, one day we celebrate and commemorate death. Or a life. And we never know when it's going to be us or someone dear to us. اِقْتَرَبَ لِلنَّاسِ حِسَابُهُمْ The people's account, your account, is getting closer and closer. What do you think is going on when we start going gray? I mean, that's a major sign. And most of us here are going gray. We have some gray. How long do you think you're going to live? What do we as the Muslims believe? And what does our belief make us do? Because what we're talking about here is general. Everybody wants a quick fix. There is no quick fix in Islam. The confusion or the, the difficulty of Islam is in its simplicity. لَاهِيَةً قُلُوبُهُمْ Allah gives it to us right there. Our hearts. Our hearts are distracted. أَلْهَاكُمُ التَّكَاثُرُ What are they distracted with? The same word. We're distracted with these, you know, what they call trifles. These petty things. TV, color, buildings, car, money, fame, business. لا هي قلوبهم. Their hearts are filled with these things. And so this is why we're not paying attention to the details of life. This is why we'd rather clean our phone and get mad at our wives if our clothes for Juma are not ready. But not do any self-reflection to make sure our hearts are ready. Are we ready? Are we spiritually ready to make the changes, the internal changes that each and every individual has to make in order to establish Islam first and foremost in their own selves? Then it transcends to those around you. And if we would focus First and foremost, on our own hearts. The filth that they pick up just by walking in the street. Let's not even say that the things that you yourself think about. The things that you pick up like the filth you pick up from walking in the street. The music that gets in there. The hatred, the animosity. The bad taste, the guilt. And the Muslims shouldn't be guilty because we have tawbah. The Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he always describes the mujrimun, the criminals, as having guilt. Why do they have guilt? Because they did it. It doesn't mean that they feel remorse, but they're guilty of whatever they did. How does a person stop being guilty? He repents and he follows up a bad deed with a good one. 
A criminal is not considered a criminal if he's paid his debt to society. We pay our debts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for violating his laws by repenting back to Allah. And following up that bad deed, that bad thought with a good one. And we purify our hearts. We set ourselves right by returning back to that right position. But it's as if, it's just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, La hiyatan kulubuhum. The people's hearts are distracted. Our hearts, let's not say someone else. Our hearts are distracted. What are they distracted with? You know. Everybody here knows what his damir, what his conscious is considering. What happens? Allah says those who are the oppressors. But let's take it on the language. Because people oppress themselves. Anybody who violates the law of Allah has oppressed themselves. People conceal their secret thoughts and their secret conversations. When someone comes and gives us some advice and we don't like it, This guy ain't who he think he is. He's nobody, just somebody just like us. We say that. Not just to the anbiya, but to the imam, to the du'at, to the guy in the street. Somebody tells you, Islam says you have to grow a beard. You get mad at him. Like he's the problem. Like you didn't know that when you shaved your face. Nobody can force you to do anything. We're not trying to pick on the brothers that don't, that, that, that shave. I'm just making a point. The same thing can be said about the brothers when they say, okay, raise your pants, wear a thobe, cover your kubra. Any law, anybody says anything to somebody, we don't like what you said. How dare you tell me that? Who do you think you are? The ego. Heart is filled with something else. And he says, look, man, who this guy think he is? He ain't nothing but just a regular man. Allah is telling us over and over and over and over and over and over again. Reflect on the message. Because your account with your Lord is coming. And all we've been doing is wasting our time. Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salam ala al-mustafa wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man ittaqa All praise belongs to Allah. We praise Him, we seek His forgiveness and His guidance. We seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evils of our own egos and the evil results of our own deeds. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, اغتنم خمس قبل خمس Take advantage of five things before five things happen. And we know this hadith, we're familiar with this narration, but how many times have we really put it into practice? Take advantage of your youth before you become older. Take advantage of your wealth before you become poor. Your health before you get sick. Your richness before you become poor. And ultimately your life before you die. We hear this in a practical sense. A man is always in one of four situations. There is something that we call urgent and important. We call important and urgent something. It's either important but not urgent, something. Urgent but not important. Not important and not urgent. And the person has to look at his time in the context of these four frames. And this is something practical everybody can walk away with. Because what we're doing, we're wasting our time. Busying our time with lahiyah. Those wasteful things. We call an amusement park a malha. You know, a place where you go and just waste your time. Watching some TV. So we have to look at it. What things are we doing that we're wasting? Where is it where Allah tells us, al with the kafir? Where do you fall into that? So let's look at it. Important and urgent. What is something important and urgent? 
Well, when you have to take someone to the hospital, may Allah protect us from that, then that is important and urgent. So important and urgent is something that cannot be put off normally. It has to happen right away. Or there's some detrimental effect that happens. Then we have the second one. Something that is important but not urgent. It's been described if you have a half a tank of gas. You need gas, it's important. But it's not urgent. However, the thing to remember about those things that are important and not urgent, that if you ignore them when they're not urgent, they can become important and urgent. And so you have to be careful. The things that are important and urgent come anyway. There's no way of stopping those, some of those things. But you are responsible for stopping them if it's important and not urgent. So you get gas before you run out. So there's, let's say, the incident happens where you have to rush someone to the hospital, but because you didn't take care of getting the gas when it was important and not urgent, now you got to go get gas before you can go to the hospital. And that delays the important and urgent thing. The next one is urgent but not important. This is when you're late and you have to go someplace and someone wants to tell you something. He say, hey, look, I'm, I'm trying to tell you and you have to go. That's urgent, but it's not necessarily important. They want to tell you what happened last week, what happened last night. Something, it may be urgent, but it's not important. So you have to watch out for those things that are urgent, but not important. A waste of time. And the last one are those things that are not urgent and not important. And sadly, most people are busy with those things that are not urgent and not important. You see the masjid empty if there's a soccer game, I'm sorry, a football game going on. It's not important and it ain't urgent. Who won last year's World Cup? Who cares? What's that going to do for you? How's that going to get you into Jannah? But you'll see some people stop talking to each other if there's a, a some non-important thing on a game affect their country. We need to reflect on our time because that's what we're wasting. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is constantly showing us that we're wasting our time and that things, wasteful things, are filling up that time space that we're supposed to be using this time to gather up and store for ourselves some reward in the hereafter. The person that is very economic, thrifty, he's a business person. He's going to take his chief investment, his time, and use it in the best way possible. So he can get the most profit. The most profit is to store up the most deeds, the most good deeds you can store up for yourself in the hereafter. That is what you should be busy with. This is my da'wah for you guys today. I said my statements, may Allah forgive me and you all. And lastly, we have to remember our brothers. Everybody's heard recently what happened in Pakistan. The Muslims are like one family. If we're really like that, you know, I... I, I if we really were like that, we would be very much up at night, like the Prophet said, worried about our brothers. I know it's not always equal that we get the word out. We hear about Pakistan, we might not hear about Africa, or we might not hear about Malaysia. We might, but since we have heard about this one, we need to be responsible and help our brothers. It's not the rest of the world's responsibility to reach out and take care of the Muslims, no matter what country they come from. You know, and this idea, this nationalism, you know, this nationalistic idea, it's wrong. It's not from Islam. Islam really came to kill all these nationalistic ideas. The Muslims are the Muslims. 3.2 million people are reported to be displaced. And you guys know the details that some of you might have relatives there. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever begins a good sunnah, you know, and he spends his money or does something and this was in the context of spending because one time the prophet saw a bunch of people come forward and they didn't have much even clothes and then their swords were hanging from their necks the mudar 
And the Prophet told Bilal, you know, give us some mercy. Call the Adhan. And when he did, they prayed. And after they prayed, one man, he said, look at your brothers. He said, look at your brothers. And then the people sat there. And then one man got up and left and came back with clothes and food. And he just put it there. And then other people started doing the same. And then in this context, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever starts a good sunnah, right? Whoever does this, a good sunnah, and then everybody else follows him in that sunnah, then they get the reward for what they did and what everybody else did without decreasing the other people's reward. Let us open our hearts. We, we forget the things we can do. If you don't have money, make dua. Dua is the weapon of the believers. If we really believe in Allah, Wallahi, make dua. And if you come out your pocket, understand that Ali ibn Abi Talib said, where a man spends his money is proof. This is his proof, what he really believes in.